What's going on, family? It's your brother Lawrence here with another episode of A to D. I'm here with my sister Delorney. What up, sis? Hey, you guys. It's been a week. I miss you. Y'all, you know we come together every episode to talk about all the things that y'all are talking about, but not necessarily talking about well online and offline, but we have a particular goal to talk about those difficult conversations, those challenging conversations by design. But our hope is to build community, and we do it by having conversations about uh, family, romantic relationships, and friendships. And today, I, 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 love, I, love, I love topics like this. Um, you know, my sister, I'm going I'm to allow you to tee this up. Okay, so you guys... I have been doing some research. So the specific question today is how important is age when dating for marriage? Now this all started because I was out and about, I know it's a pandemic, um, and talking to some friends, male and female, and age came up. One of my friends who's like just 30 was like, I'm getting older. And maybe that's why my hinge isn't hitting the way it used to. I had another friend who's much older and was very happy. He's a man to be dating a 26 year old because she is going to give him less pressure based on what he needs in life right now. And for the first time, you guys, I have to be honest, even though I love talking, I had never talked thought about how much age plays a role when picking partners, I did not, maybe because I'm relatively young, I did not think it was such a big deal. So then I started texting 11 men, a variety of men. And I brought up to Lawrence and I was like, we have to have an episode about this because the answers were fascinating. Fascinating how black men, because that's the only ones I'd be checking for, um, play, you know, talk about what age, what role age plays in their pursuit of partnership. And so that's what the topic is about today, you guys. So that's my tee up. You guys, fascinating. Wait until I tell you guys. Yeah, you know, this is this is great because obviously you know that um, romantic relationships is one of those areas that we focus on. But also, uh, you know, we're very unabashed about just our desire to build community. And I think if we don't have relationships that reach marriage, and marriage being a building block of family and family of community, it's not going to take place. And and so I think particularly on this topic, I, I'll start with this. One, I think this is sensitive. I think it's very sensitive because I think we live in a time where um, just just the ability for brothers and sisters to marry, let's say, today in you know in their twenties, thirties, forties, is just not where it should be. With some of the statistics, talks about one in four uh, black women will be married in their lifetime. Right? I think a black women's sisters are tired of hearing that because the view is like, what is the solution? And so, if you have a conversation about age and all of these preferences in 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 the in the environment where People are missing each other just in general. It's very sensitive. And so I, I, I think, I think, but I appreciate our audience. I think that they understand our sensitivity to it, but they also understand that we're, we're taking that into account while also trying to answer the question. But I think too, just, just to, uh, partly to kick it off, I do think it's based on your objective, right? I do think that it, 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 it is based on your objective and what you're looking for. And I think if you're pursuing marriage, um, and it depending on whether you're a, I think it depends whether you're a brother or a sister. I do think it 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 it, it changes. It impacts whether you want to have children or not have children. It impacts. It changes whether brothers you want to have your hairline in your wedding photos or not. <laughs> it changes. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Or it, it or or it, or it just is, even takes into account just just the availability of just you know prospects for you in your area. And so. I'll start with those are the categories. And I think now let's, let's get into some of the perspectives. So sister, the passing to you. Okay. So first of all, I cannot agree with you more as to the categories, right? As a woman, me personally, me at my age, 31, you guys, I would not date someone younger than me. I don't know how I would feel as I age, you know, but right now as a woman, I would not date anyone younger than me. Now, this is fascinating to me because I've never even had to like think about it. Now, if anybody's been on a dating app, they constantly ask you for your dating range. That is a common thing. You put parameters on things on dating apps, but I don't, I never thought about it really hard, except I just don't date people younger than me. Now, the specific thing is objective. I cannot, when I date, I date for partnership. Friendship is a core of what I think a partnership is. I want to know that you can relate to me, relate to the things I like. So for example, the woman who did my hair, I was making reference to I Love Lucy. This woman is so young, she didn't know what I Love Lucy was. I was like, wow, 
I didn't know I was old. I didn't know I was old there. And, and I say this because when I think about age, I think about what I can relate to, what we can talk about. So for me, I like people in my age range, right? That is very important to me. I'm not looking for someone extremely older and, and I have no interest of anyone younger. However, when I was asking these 11 black men, variety of age, oldest being 39, a lot of them, men wise, were willing to go as young as 24. That person in particular was 20, was 39. I said, my God, what are you talking to a 24 year old about? Like to me, nothing like the friendship portion feels weird. I mean, like, so anyway, so that's my key thing. I understand what you mean by objective, but I also think it's like, what type of relationship, what type of marriage are you looking for? And I am a big fan, maybe because of the bias of movies. I am like, you know, I know how we feel about the toxicity of 90 love films, right? But you know, love and basketball and brown shoes. These were friends, friends turned lovers. And that is important to me about when I think about marriage and romantic relationships. Mm. So that is how I feel personally when I think about age. Mm. I, I love it. I agree with you on, especially on the friendship piece. I think the friendship piece, I think everyone we to call marriage the ultimate friendship. And I think that we all yearn for somebody who knows us, gets us, we could just do life. And I also think that from a, just a um, wisdom perspective, love is not necessarily going to keep you together. Right. I think people have understood the wisdom of that, that there are going to be times when you sit, certainly the romanticism is not there, but you actually like each other, period. That that is something that's important. With that said, I think when you're thinking about just what works and, and just the reality of people trying to find people that met, I think this is what highlights perhaps an important difference between what men and women prioritize. Right. So let's say, for example, if you're, you know, and, and, and so, for example, a lot of times I think in today, the conversation when hear about an older man and a younger woman, it's almost it almost viewed in a criminal way. Like, oh, this is just, and obviously there have been extremes of that in, in our culture, let's be clear. But I just think that because it's so foreign, but this is only a, this is primarily a Western United States phenomenon. When you actually look at other countries, you look at South America, you look at other places, this is not actually odd. And this is not necessarily a situation where someone is um, arranged marriage and, and against their will and thrown off to someone. It's because there's a view of uh, the word that's been going around and I don't necessarily use it, like women are hypergamous specifically. And what that means is that they typically want uh, a man who is at their socioeconomic status or higher, typically. And it makes sense because women want security, stability. They'll prioritize that. Men generally don't um, achieve or get to a place of stability economically until much older, right? And so if, you, if you're a younger woman, or if you're just a woman and you want somebody who is more stable, naturally you're going to look to someone older. That's just from the woman's perspective, right? So you, so the, the need you to fulfill is found there, right? But there's trade-offs and balance because on the flip side, you may trade off on the friendship piece, maybe up front because you can build friendships. You may also trade off on the kind of like, we grow together, we're all figuring it out and struggling together, and then we build something together. You may struggle because you're going to come into a situation that's already stable. From a guy's perspective, the other element that's important, a lot of times, we, you and I talk about this, you know, the element of guys care about respect, women are about love, right? Not mutually exclusive doesn't mean that it's just waiting. Respect is often about listening and being able to hear and receive and things, and often it's a lot easier for a younger woman to look up to someone and respect a man who's older than her. Because one, there's an age. There's, a, there's an undebatable fact that he's been around longer. I could hear him and receive more. Two, most likely he has his stuff to he's more stable so I could receive more. And so there's a little bit more stature. And so because that's important for a man to be with a woman who listens to him generally and can trust him generally, he is going to be drawn to a woman who's younger. On top of, at the same time, a woman who's younger would be drawn to a man that's older. Because you also have to say that that woman has agency, right? Especially in the context here where it's like she wasn't dragged there. She chose this guy. There's something about this guy that attracts her in the same way that it attracts. So that's one element I want to point out that this is different in the United States. And I actually think it's to our detriment because I, don't, I actually don't begrudge women wanting a guy to have his stuff together. Like, it's like, like I, I don't begrudge a woman wanting stability. That's how you're made. I don't knock that. 
at the same time, the, the trade off is that like you may give a little bit, you may have to be open to a man who's much older because men generally are not going to be earning or be at a position where they're earning more than you if they're at your same age. And that's not necessarily the case. So I start with that for my so I find this to be interesting. So I want to respond to you first. So one, I'm a lawyer and in my age group, everyone's like the same to me. Like there are some people who like my, my homeboy in particular, who, who's dating the 26 year old is working on his PhD. So he's still, he's not in the same social economic level as I am because he's still in school. However, there's a lot of people I know who are my age, lawyers, consultants, and be, like they they are in my age. So I've never, for me at least, think I need to go older. Like they're here, they're my peers. Many of them are my peers. So I understand in the position of privilege I'm in, um, I don't think I need to go older to get uh, financial stability, right? That's number one. Also, I think unfortunately in the United States of America for black women, a lot of them have actually felt have decided to unsubscribe to finding someone financially their equivalent because then that rules out and leaves out a lot of men. I have not yet gotten there, but there's a lot of black women who do that, right? So they're not even talking about that, but I do understand. So when I hear, so pivoting to like the age gap being criminal to a certain extent, I don't see that. I don't, me personally, I don't see criminal, but I do think like, you know, she, she wanted a sugar daddy, he wanted companionship made together, right? I don't, I have a bias. I do. It's not about crime at all though, but the bias is again, they are not equals to me because this is not to me. I'm, not, I'm telling you, it's not criminal. Yeah, yeah. It's like at 23, I could be all the time at 20, even at 27, I didn't know who I was. Like I was just at, like, I had just spent all these years in school trying to earn a degree right i had not paused to realize oh i have this trauma i have that trauma let me unpack that stuff i hadn't done none of that it was just like i need to get all these degrees i need to become financially stable and so when i finally get the degrees i finally get the job i finally like feel comfortable enough now i'm like exploring who i am unpacking what i like what i don't like and why what I do stuff and why I got to know myself better. There is something, you know, a lot of 30 year olds tell 20 year olds in, in the woman context, 30 is a, a very liberating age because there's a lot you know about yourself. Not to say all of us, right? Right. Not to say all of us, but a, there is a self-awareness, a self-confidence that I have, right? I don't feel like I need to be a pinup doll to be loved or to someone to be with me. Cause I know when I get home, you know, you know, but growing and in your twenties, you want how best is the weave, how best is my makeup, how best is this? Cause I'm going to attract someone and you, there's a level of like, not shallowness you have at your twenties, but this is what you think is important. Like there's a lot of emphasis on things that are not as that are shallow. There's a lot of emphasis on things that are shallow, right? Because let me tell you something, even when we talk about financial security, I think a lot of us who have dated some men who are financially secure can tell you some of them were mean and <laughs> some of them were not nice. And you were like, Oh, this is what I wanted. I wanted financial security. I wanted this degree. I wanted this school. I want to check, check, check. And then you met someone who like met all your check marks and then realized, Oh, this doesn't really, this not him. The chemistry I want, like you said, women want love. And even though we do value financial security, we love love. We love that feeling. We love it so much, right? Again, blame it on Disney, blame it on Black Nike films. But there is something about someone who soothes us. And, and there are times we have wanted all these things that I would say shallow, right? Financial security, where he works, what degree he got, what school he goes. We can find that. I can find that a bit superficial because people lose their jobs. We just hit a pandemic. People lost their jobs. Are you leaving every time he loses his job, sis? You're not, right? So people lose their jobs. Accident, Tiger Woods, you know, like people get into car accidents. People almost die. Like things happen. So I would say for me, I do find that a little bit, a little bit shallow, even though I'm a person who cares about financial security. I, I don't know if I, I people, my friends would challenge me. Delorney, you're not leaving a good man just because he don't make the number you want. And they're right. 
because like you said, women value so much, you know, like you said, love. And as a result, when I see the age gap, I'm thinking this is like a partnership or like a business contract. It doesn't seem like a genuine love story can come from the gap. That is me. And I understand my bias. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot to unpack there. The first, the first thing I'll say is that I think what has hurt our community is what I feel called this linear perspective towards life. One, meaning I have to get all these things together. You know, I had a conversation with my dad and he was talking about in the stage of a life, like, like, I know how you're wired, like you're wired like me, but don't feel like you have to get everything together in your life before you're, you're open for your wife. Right. And my mind is like, I want, I, I you know, I think, I think brothers, who I think are wired like that want things to be together. It's just like, you have to enjoy your life. When we grew up, we didn't have everything, but we did what we do and what we have. And similar to your life. I didn't have everything when I met your mom, right? But, you know, there was something to that. I think sometimes, especially this perspective of like, I didn't know myself. But I think two things could be true. Yes, you don't know your life if you would have been with someone. You don't. As much as we say like, oh, I was this, I was, you don't know because, Again, we talked about this before. Going to business school and, and people like my, my colleagues were married. They were growing, but they were married. They didn't view like I had to get my emotional, spiritual, all this together. Right. Obviously, there are levels to this, right? For, for people like us. But I think that that is a falsehood that has hurt us and that made us put marriage off too late. That's just this. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I just want to say that. Yes, I affirm what you're saying. While at the same time saying that could have taken place in a relationship, because number one. Number two, I do think that this does continue to underscore the difference between brothers and sisters in terms of what we value. Because women will see that and say that's superficial, this, 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 that. But a guy sees that it's like it's like almost like an NBA team where it doesn't matter about the talent on the team. What matters is how well the team gels. Remember when the Lakers back in the day had everybody had Steve Nash, had all these people. And, and Dwight Howard, and they were trash. <laughs> they had all of the great people, but they weren't a good team. And I think this is something that is also a stumbling block for this generation. Because in general, again, you can't have two of, it's hard to have two of the same things in anything. And you always have different gifts. But in but, we, we, uh, but I think in this, this perspective, guys see that as something that fits. So it's not superficial. Yes, I know there's an existence of people who will, a woman just like, I'm just a look. And well, we think of it like, uh, oh, if she has looks, she has no brain, right? She's ditzy. And then the guy just has the money and he's just like this Hugh Hefner walking around with these. That's not the case. What, what a guy's looking at is just like, for, for, if you want a guy to come alive, give him mission. Give him purpose. Give him, I make space here. This person is willing to, 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 to be guided by me. They listen to what I'm saying. When I say that, that that brings a man alive, that is one of the biggest gaps for women who don't know men wired like that. Men need to be needed. And a lot of times, the struggle with many of them of same age is that those women don't have, I don't think, I, I think all sisters have the capacity. I think sisters have the capacity to be the best partner for brothers. I, I, will, I don't blink at that, right? But I think there's a skill gap because that's so foreign around needed and being needed and, and listening and this. That's just not, I, I'm just going to say it. I just think that many women struggle to, to, for that. And so a guys know that, man, I would have peace because guys pursue peace, more peace in this situation. They'll make the trade-off of she may not be the most mature, but the other elements of my life are going to get better with her in it. So I, I think that's another piece of this. To take it I think there's also this other piece, which is, this is partly why it's sensitive as well. Not just because of the gap, but if you have a situation where sisters are looking for brothers to do life with. Like, you know, there are many sisters like you who are kind of like, I want to do, uh, I want to do life with a brother. And I'm a brother who is just like, I want to be with sisters. I want to be with a sister. I really, really do. Like I make the joke around like black or brown, depending on the timeline, if we make like, but like, I want to be with a sister. To see the idea that these men are already seemingly non-existent, but they are existent, but we're just not partnering. But then they seem to be skipping over. There's almost this element of like, that's just, it, that's just tough, right? Um, it's just tough to wrestle with. I'm very sensitive to that, right? Um, but I do think on some sense, it balances out when you're the younger woman or you're the woman now who is not looking at the guys who are in your, um, in your, in your space of age looking to older, age gap. 
because guys can't necessarily, you know, uh, do that. Uh, I'm saying, to your point, I think it's just less likely that guys will do that for women much older. You had that, you had that option, right? Because men were coming at you at that time, as opposed to such older women coming at these guys in the same proportion. So I do think it balances out for that. I think um, the last point would just be around, especially we talked about this offline, which is if you want to have children, this is another sensitive thing. And I'm just thinking about this from the perspective of I'm one of those people who wants to have a lot of children, right? That's just a desire. I want to have at least three children. That's very difficult, right? To consider because I believe just from a biblical perspective, my obligation to my wife before my children is God and then my wife before my children. I want to protect her. If I don't feel as comfortable, I don't feel as comfortable later in life when you're now into high risk pregnancy, potentially putting my wife in a situation. Now, again, we're talking about black women and sisters who are fibroids, stress, things that are happening just because of the environment and the type of nonsense and stress that sisters are under. It's hard for me to go to sleep at night saying, like, I'm going to get my I'm gonna get my child and my wife is at risk because we just keep having children. So I think for men who essentially want to have many children and they're at my age, so there is a, something to be said about a woman who's much younger. Because they may not have to go through that trade-off struggle in their mind of, do I want to put my wife at risk? It's not just about me wanting a children. It's very, you know what I'm saying? Do I want to do that? So that's just something to take into account. He can love and value the woman be like, but I don't want to be in that situation where my desire for that is down. And again, we're talking about this technically, but I, I just feel that that's something to consider. Okay, so I want to answer a few things and then I can't wait. I have a lot to say about the pregnancy part. Okay, one. I do not believe that at 23, a person cannot get married. I want to be clear about that. I think at 23, 24, you know, at that age, you can get married. But to me, I think there is a, to me, there's an imbalance when a 23 year old is getting married to, I'm going to be generous, even a 33 year old, right? That 10 year gap, because I feel like they're in that she, the woman in this, in, at this age is, like as she is finding herself, which she's, she has to eventually has to find herself for herself. Right. I think there is like an imbalance, right? When two 23 year olds or 23 and 25, they're both growing. They're both grown. They're both figuring it out together. I have, you know, I don't like to use white people as an example, but I know a white couple I'm very good friends with and they met at UPenn and they just, been doing life together it's not been easy but they're at the same place they're at the same obviously men have their own developed maturity and women have their own developed maturity but you know marriage is marriage is hard right and it's even harder when you started really early and obviously women are figuring out stuff different than men so but they're at the same age and there's room they grow for each other there's a room they give each other that is required because they're both growing at you know not at the same time, but they're in the same, relatively same place in life and they're both growing together. And I think there's an imbalance when there's like a 23 year old growing and developing and finding whatever she thinks she is under a 33 year old with his influence. And it feels weird to me. And this is a bias. I'm not saying it's fact, right? I'm not saying it's fact, but I think it's, especially in the U S culture, I do think it is a Western viewpoint. I think that's really when you said that it's really key, but I also think when I, I'm from, you know, I'm Haitian, when I go to Haiti and I see that gap, I'm also thinking about security and stability, which I don't think we're all freaking out about in the United States that much. I'm not freaking about security and stability at 20, at 23 in a way that I can understand. Maybe my Haitian cousins will be like freaking out and trying to marry up for survival in the, in the most basic sense. Sometimes um, I do want to talk about, team and Joe, um, you know, I'm not the biggest sports fan in the world, but I love the Celtics when Rondo and Kevin Garnett, they were all playing together. It was just like phenomenal because it was a gel team. I'm from Miami. When the heats finally got it together with Wade LeBron, it was like a gel partnership. And that is everyone having strength that is bouncing off of each other. Right. And again, that's how I see partnership. Everyone having strength that they are bouncing off of each other and they're making this thing work. Now, again, I am talking from a female point of view. Right. And I do, you know, we were talking about this offline. There are, listen, can't wait for someone to just 
rescue me from my life. I want to, you know, I'm a woman. I love being a lawyer and I love doing all these great things, but I have no problem. And I have seen this even with when, when I'm with my homeboys that, you know, there are things when I'm with them there, they, they still men and they're still like, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. This is what we're not doing. And that is something I really appreciate and can honor. And I don't think just because, and we, and I know you're not saying this, but there are a lot of women who are older, who still can lean and trust a man. And there's something we've talked about this in this episode, women who cannot submit or lean or trust a man. It's for two, it, to me, in addition to like their own issues, that means you don't have trust in him. And if you don't have trust in him, then you need not be in his life. Right. And there are a lot of people, and I heard my homegirl says it best, that are picking wrong because then you're messing up the whole thing, right? You're picking someone who you don't trust enough to lead you and therefore having all this friction when he's trying to take you to God knows where, um, and you're not down with that, then you need to leave that person. But again, I understand that women sometimes are panic and lack, right? So a man, they don't trust to leave, but they, he still is a good time. Sometimes they might stay and eventually it just dismantles itself. But I do want to mention that in regards to pregnancy. So there were a few people when I was asking these men, their answers who two of which had children already and they did not, one of them did not want children again. I mean, he has a bisectomy. He does not want children again. So his age range was 24 to 50 because it was not a matter to him. Another one has a 17 year old. He's 37. He has a 17 year old. He was a single dad and he said he's not having his next child to 45. So he wouldn't date older than 31 because he feels like, Anybody older than that is going to pressure him to have children. He's not down for that. Now, people who want children, two of them said they would date a woman 39 years old. And I agree with you, Lawrence. As a woman who's very progressive, I do think 39 is like pushing it. One of them said 40 and then rewrote the answer and said 39. However, I also know that homeboy has already looked into um, surrogacy uh, because you know, he's being honest with himself, right? I might love this woman. And just like you said, Lawrence, she may have difficulties and we might have to just like surrogate this thing out. And I want to say that as a woman, we panic about these things. If we want children, we panic about the ability to have children and the frustration of meeting someone by the time and all this stuff. However, we I think even though we love to have children, it sometimes feels reductionist that people will pass us over, even if they, you know, I, you know, relate with us because they think that we're too old to have children, like a, like a car that's too old, like a used, not a used car in the sense that someone has written all over, but used meaning your time has, you know, the clock has, you know, life has used you up and now your eggs aren't good. And that is feels, I, I, I understand that marriage is a practical, there's a practicalness to marriage, Right. Some women, you know, some women want their bills paid. Men want children. Like there's like a practical nature to it. And it's kind of sad for women because then it takes away from like that Disney love story you're fasc fascinated on or the 90s black love movie that you're fascinated on because you want, when I think about a, 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 a love story, I think about someone like hella high water, I'm banging with you. The, like, you know, and to know that, no, you can't have kids. Sorry, um, I can't date you or I don't feel like you can have kids or I'm concerned about your ability to have kids. I can't date you. It's, it's a bit sad. And I, and I want to say this and I hate to bring up this man, you know, this, this problematic man, his don't, name don't, is Kevin Samuels. Don't, 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 <laughs> let's, let's not do that. Let's not, let's not do that. But just let's just talk the concept. Okay. Talk so the concept. Let's, let's not do that. Okay. I feel like men and then this is a bias and then the problem with the bias i have is that there's you know you can find someone to fit the examples to reinforce your position that doesn't mean it's not a bias but you can find someone to reinforce your position is that the pursuit first of all i've never seen a young marriage with this big gap in in the as millennials i have not yet seen uh, an american millennial who is 35 plus marry 10 years lower or even seven years lower. I haven't seen that yet. I'm still got life to live. I just kind of knocked into these thirties, but I have not yet seen that. I have seen them date them and I have seen them date them in a non-serious way, which is another reason this bias exists, right? Because it seems like older men, maybe 
second post second marriage post first marriage maybe post second marriage is looking for the young girl in fast car that is how it is portrayed in the media also right young girl fast car right that's what you get in your 40s when you're having a crisis you get the young girl you get the fast car and i think that's another reason why this is kind of like pushed in and i felt like the men who i was talking to not all of them but the guy in particular who's getting his phd who likes a 26 year old he wants to delay the marriage and the pregnancy and therefore he thinks that a younger woman is less pressed and if she's not less pressed she feels like she has more time to wait versus someone in their 30s who's like i want baby now i want marriage now you know what i mean and that's another reason i has i saw in my small sample size that people were were targeting a younger age not targeting but seeking i don't like that word i'm sorry yeah no 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 okay. it's all good There's, I, I appreciate i appreciate these points i think this just shows again i think that this is very much a lens a, a woman's lens on it right um on um not really understanding. And I think there's space for that, right? We, we may not fully, men will not fully understand women and women will not fully understand men. I think there needs to be an honoring of what you don't understand, I think, in many ways. And I think I've come around to this, you know, especially the past couple of years, especially understanding women, right? And, you know, I, I, I think about this even, you know, even with the initiative, like our brothers keep her and all these things. I think about, I don't know what it feels like to be in a, in a world where, um, in some sense, as a black man, I understand what it feels like to be in the world to be a target. But at least I feel as though um, there is some space for me to fight for my life, right? Even so, that's still I'm still outmatched depending on who's there, right? If it's the authorities and something. I don't know what it feels like to be in the world as a woman, yo. And like with me and the other gender, at my best day, I cannot even deal with the smallest of them because there's just anatomical, like. Like I literally, like I, I actually, I actually depend on the safety of the world <laughs> of myself. And so I say that to say, it's given me a lot of compassion around what it feels like to look for security and, and feeling safe around a man and feeling comfortable around a man and feeling secure in a world, quite frankly, that is not necessarily nice to women, which actually prey upon women, right? History tells us that. So that's why for me, it's deeper for me to empathize with women just having that ethos. Let's just say ethos of, I need some security. I need a man. I need this. Like, I'm, I'm, like, I will never get that. I think women need to understand that from a depth level, or at least respect that they don't understand from a depth level what it does for a man to be received and have peace and a woman listen to him and not fight with him. And shout out, as you point, shout out to the sisters who do believe in that. Right. You know, I had a sister look like there are many sisters who are with this. They're like, yo, I'm tired. No. Like, and even for example, they don't believe like, no, I don't believe in like, like, I don't believe in like the, I even the concept of partnership. Cause oftentimes I think the struggle with the traumatized people is that we have traumatized lens. We view everything from the, from the lens of worst case scenario, which is why I believe that even when God defines love, he says, believing the best, it's, 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 it's a, it's a different type of heart disposition when you look at everything about what damage or danger, where there are people who could look at the same thing and not view it from that kind They're like, what opportunity, what love? And I think when guys view that opportunity, when it comes to a woman, like they're like, we can have a great relationship. I can love her well. She could receive me. She'll trust. So she feels, she's enjoying this. And she has agency, right, in this, right? Versus women see that, like, she doesn't find herself. So but there's also trade-offs in life, which I think this is the other piece. You're right. I think overall, I just want people to understand I'm a, I'm a gospel based brother who believes in, we don't get what we deserve. We got, we got, got by our gifts, meaning I will not like this transaction, like, okay, cool. Let me look at the stats. All right. Does she have this? Does she have this? I'm with you. It, it, it is, it is, it is, it is, it's, it's a hard thing to take in. But the reality is that what women have to understand is that they do it too. What it feels like for women to say, I can't, I don't find any eligible men, but because just because mm -hmm. a mind doesn't make enough money that's, a pipe, that's, that's at your level or not, he's somehow not eligible. Do you know how that makes men feel? Right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say this is because I imagine, I thought about this watching Black Church PBS and a number of, 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 of things that have happened and on the news. And I think about, um, you know, I read Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome and this book right here. And I'm thinking about a woman who is, is seeing her man enslaved, 
she's being raped by a master. On top of the fact that this one, he has all the resources, he has everything, and he's this person's being prevented from being able to take care of his own family. Yet she still looks up to that man as some as her husband. Right now, if you look at this country systematically, what it's done to men who can't now be in a position where they're making that type of money, where they're ushering up black women often at times above black men. The challenge is how, how, why is it that she could still honor that man and still look at him as viable and you can't? Right? What does my money have anything to do with that? And so I, 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 I just say that to offer just the balance to perspective, the meaning like I hear. That's to say, I honor why women desire that, but I'm with you as well to be reduced, a woman to be reduced, right? To say, well, if you if you can't deal with a guy that doesn't necessarily have the resources you have or in the same ethos, same school, same this, then you have to be able to digest the man saying, you don't offer what I want either. And if I want to feel comfortable having all these children. So see how hard that feels? So I'm just saying, I'm just more pointing the mirror to say, that's how men hear that. When women say they can't deal with a guy there and they say it very matter of fact, and when a guy says it, now we have to get compassionate now. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Right. But you don't have any compassion for the guy that just doesn't meet your standard because of a very empirical transactional. It's just a dollar sign. So, uh, so I, and I'm, I'm not saying it's just saying that, but I think you're just giving perspective on that. But I think you're also highlighting let's say, a picture. And this is why I love this conversation that you and I have is because I think it gives a window to our compassion. And that's why I start off with sensitivity around this. Because, like, I don't know what it feels like to be in that position. And I think I'm just talking about the wrestle. Because here's the thing. People, you know, like, you know, I just want to be with somebody. Like, guys want to be with someone who's kind, too. <laughs> you know, like, not all women are nice. You know, like, it's not, like, I just want someone who likes me. Who, like, looks at me. A guy wants to be a hero. Every guy I know wants to be his woman's hero. I want to be her hero. I want her to look to me. She has something going down. She has a problem. She looks to me. Men want that, right? And so I think that there's an element for me of also saying that, like, the age of the club, and you just want somebody to connect with that and you figure it out later, right? But we just tend to be happy. We're having this conversation now, but I'm with you to the sense to say, if we start to break down the considerations, this is what comes up. Last thing I'll say is this. Um, over the past week, I felt like I sensed that we're having these conversations coming up. I, I, um, I went on. I've never been on dating apps. I didn't believe dating apps all this. Like that. But I went on. I said, I know. I felt we we're going to have a conversation about this. I said, let me see how this experience is. Right? Somebody signed up for a dating app and just put up some sushi stuff. I, I like put on some random photo and like I put something about plantain. And then I went on and looked. And how I felt, I'm be honest, y'all. I felt if something was not right with my spirit. Not saying I'm, I'm not against it. I'm not against it. What I'm saying is that it was hard for me to feel like I was reducing. I put the younger age ring. I was looking. I was swiping. Through. It just felt like off oh, in my spirit. How is how you? It's so easy to swipe between uh, God's creation. And so I just said to say I do empathize with that. Imagine the woman hearing a guy say, "Well, man, I'm trying to have all these kids, and you can't." Or a, a guy <laughs> is on a brother's perspective. Like, I really like to talk with you. But brother, you don't make the money I need. You know what I'm saying? I think that people hearing that maybe will allow us to be more compassionate. I, to be honest, I do think that, um, you know, th we have to ask ourselves the question, what's really our partner there for? If you want somebody to really chronicle your life and be with you, if a woman is rocking with me, like I said, like, who's, who's down, who wants to be there with me and sees me, sees me like the world, man. She's just like, that's my hero. I believe in him. I'm going to hold him accountable, but I believe in him. Man, when I tell you, like, I, I wake up at 3 a.m. and come back at 3 a.m. to work for that woman, to work for that woman, not to have to raise a finger. And I think many men are like that, but they're looking for a woman who is even that way. And I think women, to your point, are looking for a man who adores her, loves her. And, and, is, and is willing to care for her and be nice to her in the same way. So I, I just wanted to give some of the proof through part of it. I'm also tired of this little 90s slander that you're putting on our movies, but that's a whole other conversation. Go ahead. <laughs> so I think what's really interesting in what you're saying is that I want to tell you that I think both of those people, the women who are concerned about salaries and the men who are reducing to physical nature, I think they're both problematic. Like I watched this, we want to talk about other black films because I always watch the black films, how I feel about them. They vary, but I always watch them. There's this movie, I can't even recall the name right now, but it's about a high earning black single woman who's overlooking some guy who works at a coffee shop, 
right? And eventually they end up together. But the point is, you know, there are so many movies where the high earning woman doesn't want to look at the lower earning man. And we, the moral of the films are always the same that your shallowness or your concern or fixation about money is causing you to miss a good man, right? There's so many films with that scene, right? That here is a good man and you are concerned about money and so i say that because that is a reoccurring thing because at the end of the day like you said everybody wants someone kind and you know i don't know if it's based on trauma or whatever but the black woman just wants a lot of us want such a healthy marriage because of a lot of us did not see one growing up right and as a result we could control financial security, right? We went to school, we got a degree, we could control that. But love is something that is like, you know, not really up to our control. Um, and so when we meet someone, a lot of us will say, I don't care, you know, I don't care, but I'll throw away whatever, the, whatever aspirational list I had designed in my hand because, you know, chemistry is just special. I think all of us want that special feeling. Um, and if that means I have to work my whole life, then I will work my whole life. I got the degree anyway. Um, because of that special person, right? Because a lot of us saw our parents, our mothers earn a house and do all that stuff. And, you know, okay. But we didn't see that person partnered. And we talk about this a lot because that is something that is, I think, a very big goal of most, not all black women, but you know, I, I think we should have a whole episode about the society falsely indoctrinate that a woman is less valued if she's not married. But like right now, I think we're talking about age and I think age ranges are very like phenomenal. It depends, like you said, objective and what people want. I think, um, but at the end of the day, I think what people should honestly say is like, regardless of the age, I just want a good partner mm. because that's really what, I think we're all looking for and women based on our gender specific list and men based on their gender specific list. We have all at this stage of our life might have met someone that met said list and did not make us happy. So we know that it's, there's some stuff that is more to the list. There's some stuff that we cannot even articulate to put on the list. Mm -hmm. Right. Even though we attract or we, um, gravitate or aim for certain people but we know there's more to finding a good match than the list you designed for yourself mm. I, I, so okay no i was like i was gonna wrap up oh no, so, no I, was, I, was, I, was, I wanted i do want to say this though i actually think that this is important to say the um i agree um but i do i, I think part of the challenge i think you talked about this right i'm not seeing this I think part of the challenge as well is that, that we've also are living out the reality of the lack of the black male voice balancing out what sisters have heard over the years. Because of the lack of brothers there, I think men tend to be more practical. They tend to be more, what's the trade-off? What does this look like? I think there is a hyper-romanticism of you could have it all, da 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 And guys are like, no, you can't. You can't. That's just life. It sounds very harsh when you hear a man saying it now, which is why you know, we won't talk about, you know, my, my brother and all that, because I think a lot of times there are many sisters who don't receive him because I think he's, he represents most men's perspective. And I think, yes, there's anecdotes, but I just believe that. And I think that the struggle that I have often with, with, is because he's saying very practical truth. And when I talk about here, for example, everyone, I think, you know, I studied, for example, I didn't study meaning I'm a Christian brother, but, you know, like I studied the, you know, black, uh, the, the nation of Islam, you know, because of, um, a Malcolm, right? I love brother Malcolm. And they talked about even like when they were partnered, it was kind of like half his age plus seven, right? They partnered men half their age plus seven. And for me, that's, that's went on a study. I'm just like, you know, all right. But there's wisdom. Like, I just think sometimes I think what we find is problematic. I think sometimes we need to have a more humble view of like, what is the wisdom behind why they did that? Right. And I think sometimes we, we try when we don't understand things, we say it's problematic. And so I, to some degree, I, I what I think this is more about is trade offs and also balance. It's not bad that a woman wants security and wants someone there. The question is just how important is that to you against the other thing? And do you accept practically 
that people don't have everything. This is not, this is not etiquette. This is not like you can't put people together. People are imperfect. Similarly for guys. A guy needs to be attracted to his wife. He has to be. Like, like I don't care what you say, but he has to be sexually attracted. He has to be. If it's not, it's not going to work, right? So that's not a bad thing. So I don't like using the word problematic, right? What I would say is that it, it what I, here's what I think. What I would say it is problematic if you weight that exorbitantly, right? When there's the presence of other things that are just as important, right? And so that's just the thing. I don't want people to hear that. Oh, no, you're completely against. I want to hear from me. Oh, man, I'm completely against finding somebody that you're attracted to. You're completely against being thoughtful and practical if you want to have children. You want to have, because I can see the unfortunate thing about this society that so many women is that there are no limits. And that it doesn't matter whenever it's time for you, whenever you want to, whenever the world doesn't bend to you. And I think men have had to learn that very early. It does not bend to us. So just because when, when you want to get your life together and decide that, okay, now I want a husband now. Okay, great. Now I want to have kids now. The idea of someone saying, no, you should probably have it before 35 sounds like oppression. And well, guys, we say, no, that's called life. And so I think that this is why I, I think this conversation is timely. The conversation that come up from people that people don't find polarizing or not. I thank God for these conversations happening now because I do think it's exposing, one, the lack of balance and practicality a voice in the community, right? And I think brothers are bringing a perspective that they've not been allowed to share, right, um, without fear. Because I do think that uh, brothers need to hear this from sisters to soften them up so they can understand this, but women need to hear this as well so they can also speak to you and based about what they want. So I do think that there's a larger conversation in a few series, but we're good at making theory based on these things. But I, I, I do, I do want to say. So I do want to say because we do have to end. This is a quite a long episode. I'm sorry, you guys. We try to stay at 30 minutes. We really do. No, we don't. But I have to highlight. <laughs> um, I do want to highlight. You know, I think women. It, it so there is a gender. There's a big misunderstanding between the genders. Period. Right. And. We, I love our show because this is an attempt for a black man to talk to a black woman and for the world to hear it, right? Because we, because these conversations are not happening in this propensity. But, you know, black women will tell you we know life ain't easy. We will tell you. We have different problems. We know life is not perfect. We, we know that. We do not think that we can have it whenever we want. We do not think this is McDonald's. Have it your way. Oh, that's a Burger King line, I think. But I think we do not think it's a Burger King line where it's have it your way. We know quite too early. And we are making, and that's why I think these women end up in these relationships where they'd be like, there's a power struggle because they make such a concession. They end up in a relationship where they don't trust the man they're with, which is like ridiculous. Like, I think that's something a lot of time I'll be like, men, this, men, that. But I think you're right. Women have agency. If you're in a situation, you're fighting over power, you made a choice to enter that relationship, you made a choice to enter that marriage. And I understand we have to make concession, but not so much you can't follow him, not so much you don't trust him with your finances, not so much you don't trust him with your life. So I think women sometimes are making too many concessions because they have a lot, like, there's a lot of trauma when it comes to romance, and some of them concede so much, and some of them fight so much. I mean, there's a lot going on there. We try to unpack that, and we can spend so many episodes unpacking that. But um, when we talk about brothers, I do agree with you. A lot of things brothers say they get slack for, and sometimes they don't deserve slack for it. I want to stand firm for a person who loved black men, love my homeboys. Some of them do not deserve the slack they get, but some of them, <laughs> some of them, I don't know why we give them a platform. Sam, don't, and don't also, do this. Don't do this. <laughs> not so, especially when you're coming from failures, and we all. Oh. Anyways, long story short, <laughs> okay. all I am saying is I don't think black women, some of us are too, you know, social media allows everyone to criti criticize everyone. And that's unfair because everyone does, does not deserve that criticism. Everyone does not deserve that criticism. And people are a lot and they and people think we're a monolithic group and we're not. So people should be able to speak their different point of views. But there's some extremes. You know, we just got to shame them. There's some extremes, and that's political extremes. That's romantic extremes. <laughs> like, even if we're talking about politics, there's some extremes. We just got to shame those folks, you know? Oh, yeah. So, anyways, I think this was a really good episode, you guys. All started because I had a great conversation with my friends on Sunday. And 
I hope to have more episodes. You guys leave us comments. We hear comments. And if we cannot have a series, we'll definitely have a standalone episode and just drop it. I think at this rate we're going, Lawrence, we're going to have some weeks with two episodes for real. Uh, because there's a lot of content. There's a lot of things to talk about in the black community and building relationships. So that's it, Lawrence. Most deaf, y'all, 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 y'all know where to check us. If you all please, right, please, please, please subscribe. You can catch us. Uh, subscribe. Listen to our podcast. Yeah. You guys, we're on podcast. So while you're walking the streets, driving the streets, socially distancing yourselves, you should listen to us. Um, if you don't have time to sit down and watch us, right. bye. Peace.